وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين. We had finished off in Surah Imran, ayah 184. And it is the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, comforting him, telling him not to worry because of the fact that, you know, the messengers that came before him were also rejected. The messengers that came before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were also denied. And so for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comforting the Prophet and said, فَإِنْ كَذَّبُوكَ And if they reject you, فَقَدْ كُذِّبَ رُسُولٌ مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ They have rejected and denied messengers that came before you. جَاءُوا These messengers came with بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ Clear signs. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comforting the Prophet and letting him know that you do your part in your struggle. The rest of it, leave it to us. Don't be surprised because of the fact that they're rejecting you. Don't be surprised because of the fact that they are denying your message. Just do your part, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follows up with an ayah that is a very strong reminder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ Every single soul, ذَائِقَةُ note Will be a soul that shall taste death. Every single soul will eventually taste death and you will only be you will only be compensated for your rewards yawm al and full yawm al on the day of judgment and so who's the successful one who is the one right that will be relaxing on the day of judgment the one that is able to free themselves from the fell fire and gets admitted into paradise on the day of judgment then that person has Definitely, that person has surely become successful. dunya, And the life, this worldly life is nothing but illa mata'ul ghurur. It is nothing but this deceptful enjoyment. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, he said, Wallahi, I swear by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you were to compare the akhirah to this dun- dunya, if you were to compare this dunya and the akhirah, it is as if you have taken your finger, dipped it in the ocean, and looked at whatever it is that you come out with. Right? If you take your finger and you dipped it into the sea, you dipped it into the ocean, whatever it is that you come out with, that is the comparison of this dunya to the akhirah. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ The hereafter is better, وَأَبَقَى And it is the one that is long-lasting. And so it's foolish of us in that case for us to place all of our investments in this world. Right? Knowing full well that this world is one that is temporary. The one that lives a long time might reach 60, 70, 80 years, but it's a very temporary world. Right? Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard the story of, of the woman that Prophet, Nuh, uh, I think it was Prophet Nuh alayhi salam that passed by, and she was crying. And he was wondering why she was crying. He said, what is going on with you? And she was crying. She said, oh, my poor baby has died. And he asked her, well, how old was your child? How old is your baby? And she said, well, he was only 120 years old. And the Prophet, he responded to her and he said, Had you only known that there will come a nation and their lifespan is that of 40 to 60 years. And so she responded, she said, Well, if that was how short my life was going to be, I would just spend the whole time in sujood. I wouldn't even get up from sujood in that case. Right? Our lifespan is not that long. This worldly life is not that long. It is something that finishes very fast. And so we have to think about where to invest in. We have to think about where we, we want to stay forever. Right? If we want to stay forever in the in the in Jannah in the paradise, then we have to start investing for it. We have to start building our houses for it. We have to start, you know, uh, doing as much work as we can for it. And so that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala helps us to be those who relax in the hereafter. Allah says, "La You will be tested fi amwalikum and your wealth wa anfusikum with yourselves. Right? You will definitely be tested. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, "Wala nablu and we will definitely test you بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ with something from fear وَالْجُوعِ and hunger وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ and we will also test you with loss of wealth وَالْأَنْفُسِ and we will test you with loss of life all of these tests will come and it is up to us to make ourselves you know make a distinction with ourselves to see which one can pass the test right Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وَسْعَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not place A burden does not make someone go through a test that he does not think they can pass. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not burden a soul more than they can handle. And so we have to be sure that we know as these tests come, we tell ourselves, this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let me see how I react to this test. Let me see how I go through this test. 
right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَسْمَعُنَّ And you will surely hear مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ From those who have been given the book, يعني the Jews and the Christians, you will surely hear from them, وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا And you will definitely hear from those who have associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mushrikun, أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا You will hear from them a lot of harmful words. And this happened uh, soon after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had migrated to Medina. He was on, on his way, you know, to visit one of the Sahabas. On, on his way, he found that there was a large gathering. And in this gathering, you have some of the Muslims, you have some of the Banu Israel, some of the, the, you know, the Christians and the Jews. And in this gathering, you also have some of the Mushrikun. And they were all part of this gathering. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on his way, he stops by this gathering. And he says, you know, the, the words of Salam and Islam, right? He says the words of peace. And then he tries to, you know, engage these people in a little bit of da'wah. Right? And in this gathering, you have a man named Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. Right? He was in this gathering. And he hears the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This is before he, you know, accepted Islam. He hears the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa making this da'wah. And he says, you know, the words you're saying, whatever you're saying, you know, it sounds good. It sounds beautiful only if it was true. Right? But you can take this words to those people who are foolish enough to believe you. Get away with us. Get away from us with these words. And of course, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was saddened. But there were Muslims that were sitting there at the time as well. And when they heard this, you know, they became offended. It, it, it hurt their hearts. It hurt their feelings. Right? And so they started saying something back. And the Mushrikun said something back. And so now, you know, there's a lot of cursing and a lot of like, it, it became a very chaotic scene. Right? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said this ayah. He said, you'll definitely hear words from these people that will be hurtful. You will definitely you know, and encounter difficult situations with these people. And so, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's way of, of comforting everyone. So he says, وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا If you have patience, if you have sabr, if you hold steadfast in these kind of moments, وَتَتَّقُوا But also do not forget about the taqwa. Right? Also do not forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is by staying conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will remember to hold your tongue in this kind of moment. Right? And so, وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا If you are patient, وَتَتَّقُوا And you are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ Then indeed, that is مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ That is, is, is from the most beautiful of encounters. This is, this is the kind of encounter that someone will want to have. This is from the most beautiful of affairs. Right? And so, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are constantly having consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who constantly have taqwa and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us sabr and increase us in iman and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the tawfiq to follow subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadun la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik